Whew. So like Darren said, good afternoon, everyone, and we made it. Woohoo! As many of you know, my name is Jesse Dane, and I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm very proudly Two Spirit and Metis. <laughs> my family, uh, originally being from Treaty 1 and Treaty 2 territory, which we know today as Manitoba, within the country that is so called Canada. <laughs> So being very intentional is very important to me, being transparent and clear about the statements we make at CBRC, but more specifically in the Two-Spirit program, and acknowledging the colonial history of this country is extremely important. So to acknowledge, thank you. And to really acknowledge that two truths can coexist, multiple truths can coexist at the same time. We can be privileged and honored to live in Canada, and at the same time, call Canada out in every step that they take against Indigenous people. Thank you. And really want to take this moment um, to acknowledge that at CBRC, we are working to be more responsive and transparent to community. This is done through open communication, respect, and action. What that means is that when we see or hear that someone is causing harm, we communicate, we may respect the difference in their opinion, but we take action to ensure that people in this room feel as safe as possible within the current context of society. To be clear, the space that we are in right now is sacred. It is truly sacred. Whether you're indigenous, non-indigenous, folks of color, we are sacred beings. As queer people, we are sacred and we deserve this space, and that should be the center of all the work that we do. <laughs> Through feedback, we are able to meaningful adjust to meet the needs of our community. So please watch out for a post-symposium, oh my two-spirit kin, and a post-summit survey that will be coming out in the coming weeks, and take the time to let us know to ensure that next year we can improve and do better together. I would love to take this opportunity to welcome up to the stage some amazing relatives, Cheyenne, Jaylene, Jairus, like Paris, and Evan. <laughs> so the way that we're, we're, we're working to do uh, a closing panel this year and kind of adapted from last year is inviting some folks to, to talk about their experience over the last two days or the last four days. So I'll quickly pass the mic over for folks to introduce themselves um, and where they're from, and then we'll get into the questions. So introduce yourself and where you're from. Hi, hi. Oh, how far? Okay, you know, you can hear me pretty good. I'm pretty loud without this thing. Tanse kakyaon wegmaganak. Hello, all my relatives. Cheyenne mi gokeo nitsigatson. Egwa wikask nitsigatson. Egwa, the one who brings the lost ones together, nitsigatson. My name is Cheyenne, aka Sweetgrass, aka the ones who bring the lost ones together. I'm a squeechaskaigin otsinia. So I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, in Treaty 6 territory, um, but my family is from Drift Pal Cree Nation in Northern Alberta, Treaty 8. Um, and I have unknown paternal settler roots, um, and I'm the executive director of the Edmonton Two-Spirit Society. Mm -hmm. hi, hi. My name is Jaylene. I am an Indigenous Two-Spirit transgender human being. Mm -hmm. My family is from Treaty 4, Zagame Anishinaabek and Kawakatoos Nation, and Métis Nation, Green Lake, Saskatchewan. I am a 60 Scoop Sir Thriver, and the Two-Spirit Research Coordinator here in Vancouver with CBRC. Yes. And trans icon, thank you. I have to say that uh, Kwakatoos, my great, great, great grandfather was Chief Kwakatoos. <laughs> um, so my name is Jairus, just like Paris, I say all the time because folks really screw it up. Uh, my, <laughs> my last name is Swidrovich, that comes from my Ukrainian father, and on my mom's side I am Sodo, which is like the Plains version of Anishinaabe or Ojibwe, and I'm from Yellow Quill First Nation. I identify as two-spirit and queer, I use he and they pronouns. Uh, I'm a pharmacist and assistant professor at the Leslie Dan Faculty of Pharmacy at the University of Toronto.
Okay. Can I be spoken to? Oh, can I be heard? Oh my God, I can. <laughs> Such a terrible thing to be acknowledged. Um, yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Evan. Um, I go by they, them pronouns. Um, originally, I'm from Treaty 6 territory. Hi. Um, on my dad's side, he's actually an immigrant from Hong Kong, and my mom is from Cold Lake First Nations through my grandmother, Sarah Manus. Um, I am the current program director at Health Initiative Men. Sorry, Jesse, that we stole Darren. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, and I'm just so happy to be here with all my cousins and kin and friends that I made today. So. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Amazing panel here. So the first question I'm gonna first pose to Jairus like Paris. Um, That's never gonna last. It's not, it's the only way I can say it now. <laughs> um, what's a takeaway for you from, from Summit or Symposium today? You mentioned that briefly to me in passing, that that would be asked, and I thought a lot about that. And quite honestly, I had a counseling appointment this morning that I couldn't, um, I didn't want to reschedule. Um, this, this week, last year, was the week my mom was hospitalized for the last time and, and died on November 20th, um, which is also, or was also my parents' 41st anniversary. And so that's coming up, and this has been a really, really hard time. And so I'm saying that because this came at the perfect time for me. And my biggest takeaway wasn't necessarily any specific session, <laughs> but that I have a community here. And just to emphasize how meaningful that is, is that I only came out three and a half years ago um, after three months of, like, literally losing my mind in the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic alone at home. And so I didn't experience like gay things, right? I didn't do queer stuff. I didn't want to be outed. I didn't want to be seen necessarily with other queer folks for being outed. Uh, Saskatchewan is such a conservative, homophobic, racist, white supremacist type of uh, province. And, um, and then right after in the pandemic and my mom got ill, so I'm saying all this because I haven't had this opportunity, really. This is like maybe number three, the third time I've been in a space, a queer space. Uh, the Two-Spirit Symposium was like radical inclusion. Uh, I have experienced, sure, a queer space and an indigenous space, but not always together. And the way that you just don't have to educate, you don't have to share, you don't have to play, you don't have to put up an armor, you can just be. It was um, absolutely incredible and came at the perfect, perfect time for me. So like truly, I really thank the CBRC for allowing that two-spirit space to exist. Having a two-spirit lounge, that was a key takeaway for me too, because now I have the chance to build community where I didn't already have it. There's more two-spirit folks who I didn't know, and now I do, and we will continue to work together, talk together, play together, have fun together, even tonight, <laughs> probably. So yeah. thank you. Uh, keep it PG up in here, folks. <laughs> Symposium's over. Um, I'll pass it over to Jaylene, Jaylene next, and, and I'll say, Jaylene, can you share a reflection um, from the last two days or, or the last four? You said to keep this short, so... Um, when I was five, um, no, I'm kidding. Um, no, I, I really, I, I have to echo what Jairus from Paris um, was saying, and um, I want to let you all know that his grinder is on now. So, so we want to make sure that Jairus feels welcomed into the community. Yes. So um, I think uh, one of the biggest things that I <laughs> you know some of the people um, with CBRC were like I don't I came up to them really excitedly to see them because it's like the Hollywood squares when we're on Zoom calls, <laughs> and so to see uh, these humans in 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 person, and I was really affected by the pandemic being away. I'm a very social person. If you didn't know that, I am. And I, I really feel energy in our spaces. And so when we're able to come together, uh, I think that it's powerful. And so when I'm able to meet the people, the screen, it's not the same thing. 
you know, so seeing people, it's like I'm seeing celebrities and I'm able to say, hi, it's really great to meet you and I thank you for all you're doing. And I, you know, sometimes I feel like, you know, it, there's, there's so much work being done and everybody brings such important skill sets to this work. And, you know, for a long time as an indigenous trans person, I didn't actually feel there was a place for me here because I didn't feel I was smart enough. I didn't feel that, you know, I'd always felt really tolerated in spaces, sometimes too much, or just people were polite to me because they're like, I'm like the, um, I felt like the sore thumb in the room a lot of the times. And, you know, I speak from my own trans experience, but a lot of it was me to my core because I wasn't fostered to be confident. I had to, um, I learned from a young age to um, work really hard, but don't expect much. And so now as we shift and CBRC makes a commitment to really include the voices of our community and to make sure that we're not only doing that, but we're also empowering them and setting them up for success mm -hmm. and translating what it means to do research. And when I went to the recent, I, I said this in the opening, when I went to the knowledge share at Métis Crossing with E2S, it was um, when one of the um, relatives there said, you know, I, I'm a research coordinator, but really what I do is I help people tell their stories, something opened up in me, because I've literally been in discussions where I don't understand what's being said. And I'm trying to say, I don't know how to say what I need. But what I do know is that I'm with a, a really great, uh, dedicated group of human beings that are here to show up with pride of being indigenous, of two-spirit, and also knowing that we have a lot of relatives out there, and we are, we, you know, we, have the opportunity and the responsibility to really connect and when we're given platforms to be able to share our message and share our intention, that we, um, we really uh, bring everybody up, we rise everybody up and empower people to feel like, you know what, you may learn differently. You don't have to, like I don't come from an academic background, but I do have a really rich lived experience. It's, a, it's important. And so I, I, I take away that. I take away the fact that I'm able to meet some, um, and such warmth from the CBCR, uh, sorry, CBRC team, <laughs> such warmth. And I wanna thank you for that because I didn't feel like I, I'm tolerated. I feel like I'm part of and I'm important. So thank you all. Sorry, I just had to, oh, there we go. I just had to get official approval. So uh, I just had a quick, quick story that I had the luxury of interviewing Jaylene when, when they first applied to CBRC and, and one of the questions we did, we, we, we changed the questions a little bit, but one of the questions was like, how would you feel about like managing difficult situations or, or multiple people with different personalities? And her, her response was, honey, I'm a drag queen. <laughs> And I said, you're hired, there we go. That's all I needed right there, that's it. So thank you, thank you, Jaylene. Um, so I'll pass it over to you, Evan, next to, to talk about um, any reflections that you've had over the last two or four days. Well, there are a lot of things that I learned over the past four days and you know, the Two Spirit Symposium and Summit have brought such wealth to me on multiple levels, not just professionally and personally, but also creatively. I mean, you look around the room and you see the work that everyone's doing, the research that everyone's doing, and it just it takes a tremendous amount of creativity to come up with these like research questions, these programs and projects you're all working on. I mean, like you all deserve more than applause. You're doing so much, and it's inspiring to not just myself, but I'm pretty sure everyone up here on the panel and everyone around you. I mean, the work that you're doing is healing in small ways and big ways. So I think in a what? <laughs> I feel like um, my relationship with everyone has been like coyfully, aggressively, kind of like poking. <laughs> Kind of like when a raven decides to like tug at a wolf's tail, you know, just for funsies. Um, but yeah, you know, just like uh, my biggest takeaway is just like how much all of our work can influence each other's work from being more inclusive, for being more creative, just thinking of the ways I can better work with uh, peers, for example. Th those are some really impactful sessions that people can really learn from. Um, and to be more specific, Two Spirit Symposium really uh, made me feel included 
uh, coming from Edmonton um, not too like years ago. It's been really hard to find friends and family in Vancouver. So it's really just nice to be included and not to have to constantly be like questioned, you know, like the inquisition, like, are you really indigenous? Are you really queer? I mean, like, you can look at me and can tell, but, but like, you know, if this hair and this outfit does not tell that already. Um, and, you know, and the summit just like such a great way to really cap off the week, you know, there's not a single moment that I could say and point to as being disappointing, you know, and just, just a huge, um, amount of gratefulness I feel to have the privilege to be here with all of you so thank you so much Evan thank you truly shy I'll ask can you share a favorite moment that you can maybe reflect on <laughs> um yeah I've been thinking about this since you gave us the questions as well and like I don't know if I can pinpoint <laughs> like seven minutes ago um I don't know if I can pinpoint one specific moment um but like obviously the two spirit symposium um whenever you get like a bunch of two spirits in a room you get like big energy it's big vibes and and, and actually I, I think one of maybe one of my favorite moments of symposium was when all of the two spirits were here in the center of the room when Teddy, when um, Yellow Star Woman was doing their presentation, um, you know, and sometimes you go to conferences, some of my colleagues went to a conference out east, and all of the two spirits were at one table in the back of the room, and they weren't given any space, they weren't really given any, like, there wasn't a whole lot of inclusion, even though they had the 2S at the beginning of the acronym, my colleagues that attended this conference felt like they really weren't were included. They were just kind of, like, there, um, and uh, they were the only two spirit, really, like, representation, and aside from, like, one or two other people from different organizations, and so that like moment where, yeah, we take up a lot of space and we're really loud. Um, you got three tables, anti laughing. Um, it, it, it's, it's loud and, and maybe some people don't understand that loudness and why it's important that we're here and that we're, we're, we're making our lily sounds, we're laughing, we're holding each other up. Um, it's because a lot of times these spaces don't actually include us in a meaningful or intentional way. We're a checkbox, right? Um, two spirits, a bit of a buzzword in a lot of government spaces and a lot of like, um, you know, social movement spaces. But do folks really actually meaningfully want to like sit beside us and 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 grieve with us and celebrate with us and um, you know and support us? And and admittedly, some of the sessions I've heard here, um, we just feel kind of tacked on. And so I encourage you to think if you're adding to us into your work, be really intentional and meaningful about it um, don't just throw us in because you have a checkbox in your demographic that you need to hit in your research um, mm -hmm. so yeah I would say like the the whole symposium um, was just really uplifting it was beautiful to be among kin um, in a setting that's a little more academic maybe you know it's uh, some of us maybe don't understand all the language that's being used at some of the other sessions throughout the week um, but we had that space and we had that little lounge that we could go up and and just be with each other um, and so just to have our own little bubble of support uh, amid a lot of us are neurodivergent let's just say it. Um, it it can be a bit overwhelming to be in a space that's not by us and for us but when you know you have the the two-spirit program really meaningfully including us that that just goes a long way so um, I would say that yeah that's my answer I'm sticking to it <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Cheyenne so just before we wrap up, I'm going to open it to the, to the other three folks about a favorite moment if um, we have about four minutes. So I'll, I'll pass it over to any of you. Jaylene, do you want to try? When I was 12. Oh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we jumped seven years at least. <laughs> well, you know, the spirit of time. No, uh, I have to say I had so many amazing moments and the, two, uh, the symposium was, was amazing from beginning to end. And I think you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, you must be tired. There's just so much going on. And I'm like, it's kind of what I do. Mm -hmm. I really love being able to be in spaces and to lead in energy and to let people uh, know that, that they're safe to be there and do your thing and be you. I think one of the most uh, impactful moments I had was in the Two-Spirit Lounge. There was a presentation by Amanda Almond and Lana Whiskey Jack, and it was literally like, um, we, were, uh, we were all in there, it was like ceremony, it was like a sweat lodge, so because it was, it, was, it was quite warm, the, the air conditioning was doing its thing. <laughs> and, um, you know, but we had this conversation about um, the trans experience and a ceremony and being welcomed into the circle in your identity. 
and to think about for a lot of people, Indigenous people, two-spirit people, we haven't always been welcomed into ceremony. So there's conversations where we're connecting with, with elders to, to really expand what that looks like. And because for me, it's like I work with some people that, you know, have had their um, gender affirming surgeries and they haven't necessarily had the support and they haven't been able to be truly celebrated in ceremony in a circle. And that's, it's so sacred. Mm -hmm. And so I feel that coming from that discussion, the discussions of the different groups all across Turtle Island that are working together to have discussions about um, how we really continue to show up for the resurgence of the two spirit is that that is going to be a very important one is to make sure because I feel that everybody that has that courage to stand in your truth regardless of what this world thinks of it is it, it really deserves to be able to have um, that real um, moment of uh, celebration and uh, you know that's something that really said to me once again that uh, I am so grateful to be walking this earth today. Mm -hmm. I've had a, a, you know, a, a challenging journey a lot of the time, but I think when I wake up today, I look at the roof and I, I, I recognize the bed that I'm sleeping in and the food that I, that I have. And I know that the fact that I am um, in my 26th year of sobriety and I'm able to be somebody that is recognized, thank you, yeah recognized and um, you know I have the agency today to to um, really have the confidence to take a space at the table and and so uh, yeah <laughs> that was my thing today yeah you do, yeah, you do. but um True. but no I think that uh, like this is what it's about um, our heart shares and our knowledge um, transfers are, are really important because there's there's these there's these words and these um, ideas and there's these um, realizations um, that when we come together and we share that with each other, that becomes part of our narrative. And we get to, it's a, it's a flow, it's like spirit. And it just continues to, I can feel it right now. It's just like, it's just something that is continuing to move. And the more that we're able to come into a space and I, I, I really, um, I love Jairus, and he loves drag queens, so we get along really well. <laughs> um, but just to think about somebody that is new, and they're, and they're actually, you know what, I'm just, I, I, I feel really safe in this space with, with people, and, you know, the only limit is your imagination on where you can go forward. And, you know, that is something that is, is really important. And I do want to also recognize the leadership of CBRC. Like, I have to say that um, it is... It's uh, Michael Quagg has the cutest smile. Woo! And, um, Wave, Michael! I mean, I, I don't mean it's just like cute because it, it's actually, it's authentic. You know, I could feel that that's, that's actually kindness in action. And I, I really appreciate that because, you know, when you have your leaders, uh, sometimes they're too busy for all this stuff, right? And you just, and, but that smile will connect you and say, yeah, you, you're welcome here and thank you. So I, I just want to say that because I try to lead with kindness in what I do. And, and you know, um, that inspires me when I, when I see it being done as well. Thank you, Jalen. Jair, Sir Evan, you had some final words, yes, just a couple. my favorite moment, oh, my favorite moment was the Two-Spirit Drag Show uh, <laughs> that, that ended um, our two-day symposium. And uh, quite honestly, that was like the third time that I was able to enjoy something queer and like be queer myself. And then even... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Like everything about me that I had to hide and police and was embarrassed about, all of those things are celebrated in drag, right? And we had such wonderful storytellers in that two-spirit crew. And then it was replicated again last night at the Canada Drag Race party. And I was just having another realization like, oh my God, I can act as gay as I want here. <laughs> you know? And it's, it's, it's so wonderful. So thank you for that uh, so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any final words, Evan or Shan? Um, I guess like I just encourage people to consider the two-spirit people that you might meet in your life. Um, 
maybe not my fellow two spirit again, but, but with, for those of you that are like working adjacent to our community is just um, take a lot of what you've heard or what you've seen from us and really like sit with it and sit about how you're gonna work with our communities because um, we need your support, we need your help, we need to be able to proceed with whatever that word reconciliation means to each of you, um, but really moving forward in a good way. So um, if you take anything away from this week, it's that um, there's a whole community here who's like, eager and willing to work alongside you as long as we're done, you know, it's done in a good way. So um, I think that's one thing that I've really felt from CBRC is um, the encouragement for the Two-Spirit community, the like ways that they work with us at E2S, helping us bring projects and stuff to our community is really important. Um, and so I'd love to see more collaborative opportunities between Two-Spirit organizations and non-Indigenous, um, non-Indigenous nonprofits or, or other entities. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be super brief, even though I'm not really known for my brevity. Um, <laughs> from what I can tell, I'm mostly known for my laugh. Thank you, everyone, for complimenting me. Um, I know. <laughs> I was about to. But then, um, but there's a mic next to my mouth, so that would actually destroy all of your eardrums. And we're all about harm reduction in this space. Um, so I can't really add on on top of what everyone else has said, because it's been said far more eloquently than I could ever communicate. Um, so I guess I'm just going to go to some a little small mundane moment, which is actually meeting other queer Dene people that identify as Two Spirit, mm -hmm. because um, my great auntie is actually an elder at Cold Lake First Nations, and I just haven't been able to go through ceremony because I'm afraid to reach out mm -hmm. and losing the final connection to my nation through her. So that's something that I had to reflect on, mm -hmm. and yeah. So the Two Spirit Symposium is really so healing, mm -hmm. in so many ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And these are real tears. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for, for sharing your thoughts. And I think uh, I'll just take a moment to, to really acknowledge, I think one of the, the most important pieces for me that I've been recognizing over the last couple months, but definitely over the last four year, or four days, feels like four years, um, <laughs> is, is professionalism. And what does that look like? What is professionalism? And what is queer professionalism? So I really think um, historically conferences in certain spaces were pretty cold and quote unquote professional. And I feel like uh, moving forward, my main goal will be to continue to push back against that system and push back against cold conferences and focus on relationality. Focus on us as queer people, as two-spirit people, as folks within the, the sexual orientation and, and gender spectrums as, as being relational human beings who wanna connect together. And I really got to feel that over the last four days. So really looking forward to, to future events and future conferences where we can continue to pu push back against this view of what is professional and what is not and, and really acknowledge that I am professional, my fiance is professional, my friends and relatives are professional, and I should be able to talk about my family and my queerness at work and it be acceptable. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, CBRC, it is professional, but I mean in other contexts. I should have said, you're, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to take this opportunity to thank every single person in this room, folks online, and, and those who are not able to join us. I'll be passing it over to a dear, amazing friend and elder, Wayne Seward, to close us out in a song. Um, but after Wayne, I, I want to just say that we will be officially finished and it will conclude the summit 2023 together in action. So good Sweet. work everybody. Just <laughs> staring at. <laughs> I square else I am I am I am Ethan Slafaleta Sihwat. My borrowed name is Wayne Seward. I'm Coast Salish from Snanemoch. And I'm very proud to be here. What I've learned from today and this past week like my friend, 
I can't remember his name, the pharmacist. <laughs> it, I, I've learned that um, I could be mean. You know, always scared to come out, always have been. And being amongst each and every one of you makes me feel really comfortable to be here. I want to thank you all. I want to honor each and every one of you with a prayer, a prayer song that came from my great-grandmother in Cowichan Valley. She was not well, and she called all the people together. And she, she, she was saying in our language, please help me pray. I don't know how I'm going to be when I pray. Oh, poor me. And with those words, my granduncle, he turned it into a prayer for her. And I like singing this prayer song in, ga in this gathering like this that we're having today. Because I believe that we're coming together to be as one. That we say in our language, Netsamach Kualawan, being of one heart and one mind. <coughs> Thank you. 
Asiri Amnesia, thank you, my friends. Hi, Sam.